to uh, see what you want to say or if you have a question or something, um, you can chat and ask a question without speaking, you can talk by typing. And that's what chat is for. And that's what for. Share screen is something you can share a picture from your computer. Breakout room is what we're going to be doing here in a little while where, where uh, we send we go to different rooms, so to speak, kind of like uh, in a house and leave the dining room and go to the go to the bedroom. And we're going to send you to different rooms and, and you can talk in smaller circles uh, later in this call. And uh, the fun thing about that is I can boss you around and send you to the room I choose, but uh, I won't do that. But uh, we'll, we'll do that too. Um, this, this meeting is being recorded, so if somebody was not able to come today, when we're finished, we'll send a link to that recording to everybody so they can watch this call. So just be advised that everything you say and speak and sign language and everything will be recorded for everybody. Um, up in the top right hand, hand side is kind of a fun button. There's a speaker view. There's a gallery view. And uh, you can try that. You can make the yourself look bigger or smaller by changing the view of how you want to see everybody on the call. Uh, there's a full screen button. You can make that go bigger too. So that's our basic uh, parameters here. When you're talking uh, or you have the loudest um, sound in your room, the, um, the, the yellow box is going to be around your, your um, picture so that means you have the floor at the moment and uh, and wait till um, somebody else gets done talking before you jump on board so we're at a big table and uh, the only thing we don't have for this reunion is fried chicken and iced tea <laughs> but uh, we have iced tea but, oh okay <laughs> yeah. there you go <laughs> yeah we pass it by i miss it's virtual yeah, I'm missing the pies today that Eric usually brings, uh, but uh, we'll get to that some other time. So it's going to be a fun day. We're going to run here about an hour or so, and then I'll stay on after the call's over if anyone wants to, uh, to go over for that. So any questions about the Zoom thing? You guys are doing great. Okay, if, if you get too loud or, or it gets uh, rambunctious in your part, your neck of the woods, I might mute you, but don't take that personally, okay? <laughs> but it's good to see you all. Glad to be part of this family. Uh, later on, uh, I, I understand that Aunt Ruth can't make the call today, so uh, we're gonna dispense with the reading of the minutes of our official meeting. Um, and uh, later on, we want, we want to do something about president for next year or keeping the current president which is Howard so we'll talk about that later but but Howard is our presidente so I'm going to turn it over to him okay well Ruth uh, Ruth is scared of technology apparently you know she doesn't even have an, a working email address and she was just I think too uncertain to get on she she does have um, I think a smartphone but um, just just didn't want to get on so she said she didn't want to mess up things for us. So I said, okay. Uh, but I think somebody is taking, going to get notes to her. Carol, were you going to do that? Somebody was. Well, it's being recorded. It is well, being recorded. That's yeah. true. I don't, I don't so, even know if she, if she can get on to watch it. But uh, anyway, uh, she'll I am watching the chat. So I have, I'm not sure I could do both. Yeah, that's so, okay. That's, that's okay. You well, if somebody uh, wants to volunteer for one of the two roles, I'll do the other one. Well, Howard, you asked me to take a role in how many, who, what states they were from, so I'm doing that. Okay. All right. And then we can probably make up something that will be the rest of the of the meeting. This um, um, we're, this is going to kind of be a special uh, Uncle Elvin day because we're going to we're going to interview him in a few minutes, and then. Uh, we're also going to uh, open with prayer by uh, Son, and then we're going to, if, if Sonny makes it on later, we're going to close in prayer 
with a grandson. So it's going to be kind of um, uh, an un Uncle Elvin special day. Um, Harold, uh, would you uh, open our meeting with prayer? Can you hear me all right? Yes. Father, we want to give you thanks for another day. We know that each day is given to us by you, and uh, it's kind of fun being able to jump on and see everybody that is around the country. Our country has uh, <clears throat> needs people like our family to help and uh, influence others. Father, we want to thank you for the heritage that you have given to us. Uh, the many, many lives that have been touched by the missionaries, the teachers, the, the pastors. Uh, help us to all be the influences uh, that you would have us to be. Father, we just ask you to bless our families in the coming year. Now, this year has been different, but you have shown yourself in a mighty way. We ask you to have a special blessing on each one that is on here uh, as we speak, as we interact, uh, deal with some of the technology. But Lord, uh, you're in control of our life and help us to always be in the center of your will. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, um, some weeks ago, uh, my sister Nola uh, noted that with the passing of uh, somebody whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, that Uncle Elvin became the only living grandchild of William Scarf Rosebrook Sr. He is... He would be um, my generation's great-grandfather. And for some of you, several of you, he would be your great-great-grandfather. Um, Elvin is the, he's the only living grand, uh, grandchild of that man. So I thought we might interview him today a little bit with, oh, there's a picture. Hal's got a picture of him up there. No, wow. no, that's, that's not him. Who that's, is that? Unmute. <laughs> It's W.S. Senior. Okay. 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 Well, we came close. Doc and, Doc and Lizzie. <laughs> okay. Doc and Lizzie. They sound like they ought to be in a in a movie or a telefilm or something, don't they? Doc and Lizzie. Interesting name. All right. Well, um, so let let me just get Uncle Elvin to talk to us a little bit today, and I've I've um, I put together a list to make it possible. Uh, or easier, I put together a list of questions that I'm going to ask him. I have sent that list to him, so he's not having to depend totally on on hearing this. And uh, so let me just start down, you know, with what uh, what I've got. Okay, um, I had the list here somewhere. I had it. I've lost my list. Here we go. Okay. Uncle Evan, you were the, uh, as we said, you're the last living grandchild of this William Scarf Rosebrook. What, what is some brief story that you remember about him? What, what's one special memory you have of your grandfather? Well, there are several, but I've tried to get down to the basic one when I was with him. We had to say John got the horses. Had a barrel of water on it. He went to put it, to take it down to where there's a fire out in the meadow. So we had in the meadow, he puts the fire out. But that one thing, what I have other little short memories. You remember the hearing the story about him hunting with the black powder shotgun rifle, and he forgot to take the ram out. When he shot at the squirrel, the ram rod went up and stuck in the tree. So he had to cut the tree down in order to get the ram rod down. Or oh, there's many other stories he told me, but that's the main thing that I remember about him. Oh, that's a great one. I've, I've never heard of anybody doing that. Oh, goodness. Well, you've got um, Elvin, a couple of brothers, and a sister. Um, why don't you why don't you think about them um, and I, I want you to tell me one little detail about them that maybe comes to your mind it could be funny it can be serious it can be consequential it can be trivial um, it really doesn't matter for instance if I was doing this for my wife Barbara 
I might say she likes convertibles. If I was doing it for my Nola, for my sister, Nola Swinehart, I might say she has helped coordinate packing a gazillion crisis care packs that go to areas around the world hit by natural disasters. If I was doing it for my brother-in-law, Gerard, Gerard Reed, I might say he reads at least one, one entire book uh, a week. So let's take Herman first. Okay. What's something you might say about your brother Herman? Herman was a first bus driver for the first two years in high school. Well, and the funny story part about it, it may not really be funny, but it's funny the way you think about it and what happened. He had an accident. He was out with his, with his combine, and he was standing just a little too close to the power takeoff. And he caught hold of one of his trousers, or, or trouser leg, and he jerked it off completely off, so he had one bare leg. <laughs> That's the funny part. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, tell us, tell us something uh, that you remember about um, about Marvin. What is what is one thing that you kind of remember about him? Well, a little accident when Jim, not really an accident, he was right in a wagon pulled by horses. And when he was up on the hill there where James Rosebuck lives, uh, a lightning had struck him and left a little round red spot on the top of his head about the size of a quarter. But he didn't kill him, but he sure felt the pain. Another thing about him, <clears throat> He would let me use his hay equipment as long as I kept it all the equipment to be repaired. That's the main thing. Then you also have a sister, and that's my mother. Um, so what's something that you remember about my mother, Velma? Okay. Um, she was playing, taking music lessons on a piano, but they didn't have a piano at home. So she had to use the organ. She had to pump it with her feet to pump up the air. And the air was made to go across the metal reeds in the, in the organ to make a lot of music. But, that, but I enjoyed hearing music from there. Now, the second thing I remember, <clears throat> In the hay field, there was a five foot horse drawn mower, and the yellow jackets happened to come up and stung the horses. The horses got all excited and ran off. So she hopped off with the mower, and the mower machine went down across the a branch of the ditch, and it broke the, lock, the dogs in the wheels, on those cast iron wheels, it broke them, and then he broke some other pieces. So the horses ran all the way to the house. <clears throat> well, uh, the story that she t tells that I, I, I have perhaps told to most of you is, is that sometimes your parents would send you to uh, squirrel hunting and one of you would carry the gun and the other would carry the shells. And always makes me think of, uh, is it Barney Fife in, in, the, in that TV show that uh, uh, he has that one bullet in his pocket. Anyway, um, let me let me ask you let me ask you one final question, Elvin. Um, is there a word or a phrase or a thought that you would hope would come to people's minds out there in the future when they think of the Rosebrook as a as a clan or as a family? What a what's one thing you hope would characterize the Rosebrook family? Well, I have to hope that all of William Scarf Rosebrook seniors well, in generations will keep up the Christian heritage, the union in the heart, that will allow all of them to see him again in heaven. And that is also my hope. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing I have. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, 
isn't, isn't it amazing what we can do with Zoom? We can hear from Uncle Elvin and he can, he can, he can see us and uh, we can communicate well. Uh, amazing. Let's, um, let's think about, let's see, is, is, it time, is, it our, is it time for us to do one of our little, um, let me get my schedule up here. Is it time for us to do one of our little, um, uh, yeah. Let's let's go off to one of our rooms, and I have um, I have a list of questions here that I, I sent to you. So some of you have seen those. Um, let's. Well, now so, I have to find my list. I don't. While find you're them. looking for that, we do have a comment in chat that I would like to share for those on the phone. We okay. are celebrating an anniversary today. Uh, John and Shelley, 28 years. So congratulations. Happy Ooh, anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yay. Yay. There ought to be a virtual cake to cut or something, don't you think? Well, we have a birthday and an anniversary. Oh, who's the birthday? Daphne. Oh, okay. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm well, sorry, uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking some notes from my dad. Uh, who, sorry, and I was behind. Whose birthday is it? Daphne. Okay. Thank you. You get it? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, the, let's, let's take a couple of those questions that uh, Carol has mentioned, has given to us that she wrote. Um, Let's, uh, the first two are, and you don't have to, when you go to the chat room, you don't have to all talk about both of these questions. Uh, how long should we give them, Wayne, do you think for this first time? Would um, maybe 10 minutes or so do it? I think so. I think that'll be fine. Okay. All right. Two questions. One is tell us about an extra project or activity you've taken on in the last few months. What's some <laughs> extra project or activity? The second question is, what's the craziest thing you've done to catch someone's eye? And that could be catch their eye in a variety of ways, either as in terms of your job, in terms of, um, I guess, romance, in terms of just wanting to be a friend, in terms of, I don't know what else. Uh, and what was the outcome? So th those, let's talk about those two questions a little bit. Um, Tell us what you're going to do, uh, Mr. Host, in terms of groups and sure. all that. Sure. We're going to assign. I have uh, my computer showing 11 participants, and that I guess that I get left out. I'm I'm the host, so th there's going to be three rooms we're going to be going to, and uh, it will automatically assign you randomly to one of three rooms. Um, if you don't like the person in your room, talk to me, and I'll send you somewhere else. But. Uh, <laughs> We'll be in three rooms and uh, there'll be a timer on your room that'll show when it's going to end and it should automatically bump you back into this main conference area at the end of 10 minutes. So uh, I will be trying to do that right now. Okay, the two questions again. Crazy, uh, what's extra project or activity that, you, that you've taken up the last few months and what's the craziest thing you've ever done to catch someone's eye? So... Okay. Uh, he will send us to a room and then at 10 minutes it will automatically bring us back and you're going to get to invited to the room you need to in, let yourself in oh that's right we have to on the on the on the front of the thing you have to click on uh go or so, something so yeah so you can uh, you join your room. go to your room room I can jump in this room <laughs> you can hear me <laughs> yeah hey, okay everybody's in the room okay I'm just checking in I'll, I'm gonna go to another room okay so what projects have you been Two minutes. Yeah, I didn't do that right. 
the second year. Our youngest graduated high school and we have been planning her senior trip for months and she's been planning on it for like eight years since she was 10. So we decided to, uh, to keep it up and be safe and we came home and did not get The entire block, you'll get all the houses, the kitchens remodeled? Uh, I think there's one house that needs to be demolished, not just the kitchen. <laughs> Was that yours or another one? No, no. <laughs> another one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Breakout rooms there and here. How do I change the length of the room? It's gonna. Okay, so edit. It must. It might be recording me right now. I'm going to pause the recording. So Esther, I think we're back in the main room. Yeah. Okay. And others will join us here in a minute. <laughs> they had a few more words to say. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys. Hey Sonny, how are you? I'm doing really well. I think I'm going to start the video here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we made it. Hey, we're on this call. There's more than three of us here because good. with Zoom, we've sent out them out to these breakout rooms and they'll be joining us here in just a minute. They're good. coming back in now. Hey, nice. Hi Sonny. Hey, how are you? Okay. Well, good. I'm going to put it on gallery view here so I can see everybody. Hey, Sonny. Hey. Ah, hey. oh, Sonny's there. Yeah, I made it. Sorry, guys. I'm, if you could smell me, I'm a little bit uh, hot and sweaty from playing softball. So <laughs> better be glad you can't. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you should, man. We don't have smell o vision yet. So that's yeah, good. that's good. <laughs> Thank goodness. I think the virtual... Hey, there's Sonny. Yeah, I made it. All right. The virtual, the virtual environment comes without smells. I think we can we can see, we can hear, but yep. I think the smell we don't have. Yeah. Now I did <laughs> I did uh, hear recently that there is for sale a um, a hologram that you can purchase, but it's quite a bit, and it's actually about seven feet tall that would fit into your house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you could you could hologram somebody into your living room. Oh dear. <laughs> Do we really want that. <laughs> I think we should try that next year. Yes, <laughs> good idea. I vote yes. I make a motion. Yeah. I don't know if you have to buy like one for each person, so you have to have each person sitting around in the corner. <laughs> yep. I don't know what it'd be. Hey, Sonny, we had your, we had your uh, grandpa tell us some stories a while ago. One was about uh, William Scarf Rosebrook Sr., which would be, what, your great-great? Yeah. Great-grandfather? Yeah. Somebody three. tell me how many greats he needs. Three. 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 Okay. Your great-great-great-grandfather that went s squirrel hunting and had one of those old rifles you had to you had a ramrod, you had to push down the powder and then the wad and then the uh, whatever your shell or whatever it was. And he forgot to take the ramrod out. <laughs> and so when he shot it, the ramrod went up and stuck in a tree. And uh, did, did Elvin say they had to cut the tree down? Mm -hmm. Had to cut the tree down. <laughs> yeah, had to cut the tree down to get his ramrod back. Nice. <laughs> 
So the ramrod was worth more than the tree. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Apparently. Well, uh, what we're doing, Sonny, we just came back from the, um, some rooms. We were divided up into three different rooms. We talked some questions and so forth and, and chatted a bit. Um, we'd begun with the interview of um, my uncle Elvin, your, your grandfather, and then we went off to these rooms and, and now we're kind of back um, and we'll probably go again to some rooms. Are you gonna, are you, what do you think about doing, are you, are, Wayne, are you thinking about sending us to the same rooms or different people? Um, I, I'll just do a random, I'll let the computer okay. program randomly assign you. And, um, and so you might have a couple of people the same and a couple of people different. Okay, and then again, this is kind of like us sitting around tables and um, in the Lions Club there at uh, El Dorado Springs and uh, just kind of chatting. Let me give you uh, two more of the questions that Carol gave to us. One is, if you had a week to spend in service to others, how would you spend it? So that's one that you'd be thinking about and kind of keep this in your mind. If you had a week to spend in, in, in serving others, what, what would you be doing? How would you spend it? And then, um, then the second question would be, Tell us about the last thing that you learned just for fun. What was the last thing just for fun that you learned uh, either how to do so some, or, or learn some fact that you learned something just for fun, not because you had to, you just learned it. A skill, something, whatever. So if you had a week to spend in service to others, what would you do? And the second thing is, what was the last thing that you learned for fun. Is it went to the same? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can move them around. Mm -hmm. I can move. Okay, let's do it. Let's move um, Harold and I'll move Hal to two and him to three. <laughs> he was in on our last practice session, wasn't he? I think. Yes, what? I think yes. so. Yeah. 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 And um, I'm trying to think who else might have been in on that practice session. Uh, I had a couple of granddaughters, and I thought one of them might be around today, but she's not. Um, and I thought Caitlin might come on, but uh, I tried to get her parents to get her on, but she didn't. Anyway, so we're here um, and, and doing well. Uh, it, uh, just amazing technology. I, I was um, talking to a lady the other day that said that um, she, her, her, her mother reads to her children on Zoom at least once a week. She'll read for about 30 minutes. She lets the kids pick a book. She'll hold three books up and, and the kids pick a book and then she reads for 30 or 45 minutes to them. And she said, she thinks that her grandkids are probably, or her kids are closer to their grandmother than they've ever been because they have this regular uh, meeting on Zoom and interaction uh, that Whereas before, maybe they see each other three, four times a year briefly, and the adults are always talking or something. But this is one-on-one -on -one grandma time. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Wayne, can you, can you prepare us again for another group? And, and the two questions this time might be, tell us about a song or a songs or songs that put you in a good mood no matter what. What is it about the song that works for you? And then the second one would be, what is the greatest act of kindness a stranger has done for you? When we come back, we have kind of a, we'll have one question that's kind of the, we'll, we'll talk about it together. But okay, this one is about, tell about a song that puts you in a good mood and, and basically why. It puts you in a good mood no matter what's going on in your life and, and why. And then the second one is about what's the greatest act of kindness a stranger has ever done for you. Okay, Wayne, send us off.
Okay, I'm exchanging a few around and I might bump you around, so don't take it personal. Here we go. We'll, we'll talk fast. We'll say things really quick. Okay. <laughs> there but Shelly Knight didn't join. Oh, she's gone. All right. Likewise to be there. I want to see you again. Amen. That's my great desire to see every one of you there. That's fabulous. Agreed. Oh we're just for a second. That's what William Scarf's desire and his wife, Lily, have that same desire in their hearts as well. Amen. What a day that will be when a great reunion takes place. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, the little one. Who's this? Sonny, who is this? Let me say your name. What's your name? <laughs> Tell him your name. Say my name. Hello. Hello. His name is Parker. Hi, Parker. Hi, Parker. Hey, tell them how old you are. Three. Three years old. All right. You're pretty three-year-old. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. What's your favorite song? Can you tell them your favorite song? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? Mm -hmm. It is? Baby Shark? Baby <laughs> Shark. Do, 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 yeah. do, baby Shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> See ya. Uh, Wait, this one's being recorded, isn't it? Because it's on Wayne's. <laughs> yeah. So they can they can definitely play that back for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carol's singing now. That's good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Carol's done. Carol saw the recording. <laughs> <laughs> what was our second question in this group? I don't remember. Uh, I think it was the greatest, let's see, the greatest oh, yeah. act of kindness a stranger has done for you. Yeah. I remember one time not very long ago, we ha I was up at the grocery store and it had been just a rotten, rotten day. We just like, it was like one of those days where everything that could go wrong did. And I had moved money over from one checking account to another to go to the grocery store. And uh, I was in line at High E. and long story short, the money hadn't moved yet. And I didn't have the debit card for the other account and I couldn't get a hold of Eric. And this lady in line behind me paid for my groceries. And it was just, so sweet. I was clearly stressed and I was going to leave the groceries there. And it was, it was just really a blessing to me. And, and I have done that for other people in the past, you know, so uh, it was, uh, I had never been on that side of it and it was, it was really cool. Wow. It, it was hard to take it, you know, in the moment, but um, it, it was just that little reminder that God was still there. Sweet. My greatest act of kindness from a stranger is this stranger right here married me. <laughs> and, uh, married a stranger? That was so kind of this stranger, <laughs> stranger. To, to take me in. Well, she was at the time. But, but strange, I know. But uh, <laughs> a blessing to me. Haven't you known her since fourth grade? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, and just she's, second. Uh, she's very forgiving. She's very forgiving. I, think he's I gotta go. I need to uh, help Hannah with something. So goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 Good to see you. I think we're going to be bumping back to our main session here in about 30 seconds or so. I didn't know I was supposed to be. Oh, I just thought you said you were supposed to be. Um, yeah, I think I probably won't. Okay. Have fun. Okay. Well, now you're stuck with just me. It'll do it automatically for us, too. Mm -hmm. just I'm back. <laughs> That's funny. Here we are. Okay. Did are we, we lose a back? couple people? We're still missing somebody. Here. There's somebody. There we go. There, there, they, come. there they come. Okay. All right. Here is uh, here's our question kind of uh, for all of us somewhat together. What do you consider to be the best thing ever invented and why? Air conditioning. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just oh. went a whole month, a whole month without air conditioning. Oh, <laughs> no. Mm. Hard. 
<laughs> we did that a few years ago and it wasn't fun. We didn't replace the air conditioner until the furnace went that following October. So then we had to replace them both. <laughs> yeah, I stayed here at my daughter's for a whole month. I just, it was too hot. <laughs> I, would say I would say electricity because stuff we mentioned has to run on electricity. And I'm sure dad could tell you when they didn't have electricity. And uh, uh, that, I guess it came through this country here in the early 40s. So we didn't get it on the farm until later. I remember getting it out on our farm, and I was had to be old enough to remember. So it was either forty nine or fifty there. Wow! Wow! Did Did you guys Ooh. have on your farm? Did you have um, one of those um, windmill generators like uh, Grandma and Grandpa had? Our yes. dad hooked it yes. up to some batteries out in the and um chicken house he had a bunch of batteries and he had a windmill hooked up to that oh wow i would like to i would like to actually challenge my dad's answer on that because <laughs> they they like to uh they like to make a comment about uh whenever we make homemade ice cream um my dad likes to point out the fact that they used to make homemade ice cream by just manually turning the handle and they, they always make the comment about, well, we should just get you a handle so you could turn the ice cream. I, I, I keep telling them they just have cold milk if that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ought, to, you, ought to take, you ought to take a poll and see how many have hand cranked ice cream. Doesn't matter. Yep. Doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> I am. Yep. in the driveway. Uh, uh, here's, here's my poll. How many would not do it again? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, bought, sure, yeah. we bought electric ice cream maker for that reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Cheryl, <laughs> a milkshake. It does not freeze. Good, good <laughs> memories. Good memories, so, right? though. Cheryl <laughs> was a little child, um, a little toddler. I was up at um, Uncle Elvin and Nadine's house uh, one summer, babysitting her, I guess. And uh, of course, Uncle Elvin had milk cows back then. And so, I don't know, it was like the, right after lunch or whatever, Nadine says, I think uh, this would be a good day to make some I-C-E-C-R-E-A-M. <laughs> Cheryl was, you know, they thought they were being really smart and spelling words, so she didn't know what they were saying. She she caught on to that word right quick. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> she knows ice cream. Yep. You know what I remember about the hand crank things is that um, I usually got invited by my parents to sit on it uh, to help hold it down yeah. uh, so, so that the one cranky didn't also have to work hard to kind of hold it still. So I remember as a kid sitting on top of a towel on top of the mm -hmm. ice cream freezer um, being, being the weight. It's called teamwork. teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> but dad well, made, too. made the dream work. <laughs> I, think dad just, I think my dad just liked to sit on the ice cream because <laughs> when I was growing up, I have very distinct memories of him sitting on the ice cream, but also cranking it. Now, I don't know what that says about my brother and I that we weren't helping with this, but yeah, I remember him true. sitting on it on a towel, cranking it, which was great. We got wonderful ice cream. Thank you. Uh, so. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, what's another invention? Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day, and uh, I think bread. I mean, yeah, I, I could probably do without almost anything, but like if I had to live without bread, I, <laughs> you know, be just very sad life. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you make bread? 
Uh, occasionally. I, I'm not a great bread maker. I don't make what you would say is kind of traditional American bread, but I'll make schiacciata, uh, which is an Italian bread, or uh, recently I've been making oatmeal bread, um, which was another thing my mom used to make when I was younger, and I found a good recipe for that. Um, but, and I'll make sweet breads and things like that, but you know, a really good, Ita or like Italian loaf of bread. That's, cool. you know, yeah, definitely my favorite thing. My little invention I had, it's in the last two years, I get to a place where I couldn't hear the doorbell. So I rigged up a space of a kind of a light system works just exactly like a nurse call. I mm -hmm. at the door. And then it tells what color it is. The red with my back door and the white light with the front door. That way I can know there's somebody at the door. That's my invention. The last yeah. invention I had. Wow. <laughs> That's I'm, good. I'm glad you got it working, Elvin. I remember um, I was up there maybe a couple of years ago and you had it, you had the parts kind of in progress and uh, it hadn't been totally installed. I think you were waiting on Harold to come over and and drill some holes in the ceiling or something, but I'm, I'm glad to know it works and it works like you thought it would. That's exciting. That's really cool, yeah. Elvin. One, one company that called me one time and said, uh, you need to go up to a local hospital up here. They have trouble with all of their clocks in the building. They're all tied to one master clock. And for some reason or other, the first three floors get the minute change the rest of the floors the clocks don't move so i had to figure out what is in the world is going on there and uh to make a long story short uh i figured out that that master clock didn't have enough oomph to trigger all of those clocks to change the minute and all that so i built a circuit that would drive all of those clocks in two towers from one master clock and I guess today it's still working. And so good. Yeah. Up for me. I remember something uh, Uncle Elvin invented. I was a little kid on the farm visiting my grandpa Marvin, and I was at Uncle at Great Uncle Elvin's um, shop or something. And he had he had figured out how to make a push mower, you know, like a push grass mower. He fixed a seat on it, and a transmission on it, and a belt on it. And he, he built a riding mower out of a push mower, and you could sit on a push mower and steer it and drive it. And I thought that's pretty smart. So <laughs> yeah. they're all over the place now. He would invent all kinds of things. One of my favorite things uh, to do when we would go visit Grandma and Grandpa Rosebrook's house was to get into the attic where. Mm -hmm stacks of popular mechanics and popular science that belonged to Elvin were stacked. <laughs> and uh, just kind of, an, just, uh, I guess, evidence of his interest in, in gadgets and inventions and so forth. And I would just, I, I, would, I could be happy all afternoon just sitting in that, in yeah. that little bitty attic space, reading through Uncle Elvin's uh, popular science and popular mechanics magazines. I don't, I don't have any idea what happened to them, but, uh, for me, they were that that was that was a great reason just to go to Grandma and Grandpa's house, mm -hmm. get into that attic. I think they sold them at the farm auction. But yeah, oh. I spent a lot of I spent a lot of time reading through them too. It's really neat what they what they had in them. Yeah, read a few of those myself. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Exactly. At grandmother's house. It was when I was, we would go there. I remember she would often have chicks being brooded or raising chicks at the, at, in the attic there, attic area. Hmm. Wow. Okay. That, might, that was after my time. I don't remember chickens in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it wasn't chickens. It was little chicks that had just been hatched. And when they grew big right. enough, then she put them out in the yard. But Okay. They were reading pop. Mechanics. <laughs> uh -huh. Or maybe you were just distracted by the popular mechanics. You didn't realize that there were little baby chickens running around all over you. Anybody, you know, we've kind of we've gotten onto a few memories of uh, Uncle Elwin. Anybody else have 
have another memory of, uh, of Uncle Elvin or Nadine or uh, maybe some of you older ones uh, about their courtship of uh, Uncle Elvin and Nadine. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Let, let's, let's tell Uncle Elvin stories for a minute or two here. <laughs> I remember when they were married. I don't remember much about the, the ceremony. It was crowded in the house, so I was outside. And I don't know who the guys were, but they were... Um, had Uncle Elvin's pickup that the, they had brought a big stump in and high centered this pickup on top of this stump so he wasn't going to go anywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. He got high centered at his wedding. That's good. I don't remember anything about their courtship. One thing I remember about Uncle Elvin was he. He um, substituted, I think, for one of my teachers, and he always had these little books that he would give out, and you could color or trace and do all kinds of things, and I remember that. <laughs> that was neat. That's cool. Now that I've Look got... a smile on his face from that memory. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that I've got hearing issues, and I have this remarkable little piece of equipment inside my ear. I, I remember, uh, I remember the hearing aid that uh, Uncle Elvin had to, had used to have to use it, a big old thing when this pocket as big as a cigarette, uh, you know, cigarette case or uh, even bigger and then, a, and then a wire that somehow made its way up and into his ear and we, just thinking in terms of inventions, I, I think this is a little invention of this piece of equipment inside my, inside my ear and some of you also may have them that do far more um in terms of sound than than that one that uncle elvin had years ago because i've got the kind that that they only they only amplify the sounds that i don't hear so the, the frequencies that i don't hear they don't they don't just amplify everything yeah and i found out that cats really like to eat those kinds that howard has because i have some too and, and my cats really enjoy eating those <laughs> it's pretty expensive hobby okay. Very in, they have very expensive taste. Maybe they have a cat that, of nine that. lives or something. <laughs> no, that's how battery. And, and oh, how I tried you? eating a hearing aid battery. Yes. They don't give you much energy, by the way. I do remember <laughs> that uh, anytime us as grandkids, we would be a little bit too loud. That grandpa would reach up and just turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband does that. <laughs> It's even got an off button Busted. where you can just turn it off, too. <laughs> oh, me. Well, um, this has been a great time. You know, I, I didn't know how many. I, I think what, in terms of, of individuals, I think we've had about 18 on. I think I counted a while ago. No, there's, 20, there's 21. 21. 21 different people. And I, I have seen another person. Funny, who was that little kid right beside you all ago? I had Parker, and then uh, there's, uh, there's Bella and Peyton were here. Um, they were listening, and, and I had to mute a couple of times so that you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't hear some things. <laughs> no, tell us uh, tell us how many states we've come from. There are eight states. Wow. Two from Arkansas, three from Connecticut, five from Iowa, one from Nebraska, four from Missouri six from Oklahoma, one from Texas, and however many from South Dakota. You named three mm -hmm. kids, so that's, what, five from South Dakota? Six. Six? Okay. Usually we ask the question, who drove the furthest, but won't do any good this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we come the furthest. We're not sure where this well, I guess it originates in Arkansas. So uh, we came the furthest. Depends on how long your internet going. cable is. Yeah. Probably Lita with the East Coast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, how many of you are on um, cell phones? R raise, just raise your hand if you're on a cell phone, if you're using a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Probably just us. Okay. 
I knew I knew we had some, and um, I had I had been trying to get um, a couple of people about the fact that they could use a smartphone. They uh, and to get on, so I, I knew that we could. Hello, John. Well, There's no. Okay. Um, Bye, John. We're down about to the end of our time. Um, uh, Sonny, uh, how, how close are you to Sturgis? I, I could probably reach out and touch it. I mean, Woo! Yeah, we're, we're, probably, we're probably 15 minutes. Whoa. Wow. I understand there are 250,000 bikers headed your way, most of whom are not going to wear masks or social distance. So <laughs> there'll, be, there'll, be more, there'll be more than that. They're, about five years ago, they had uh, about 700,000. So wow. When wow. we get to the 80th year, they'll, they'll tend to do whatever. Yeah. Really? Goodness. Wow. Well, uh, Sonny is the uh, grandson of Uncle Elvin, and I asked him if he would close our formal session in prayer, and then if you want to stay around and chat a bit more, or Wayne said he'd be willing to, to stay on. Sonny, any, before you pray, any, any good words you want to say to us as a family? What would you want to say to the family? Um, thank you guys very much for, you know, for inviting me. I, I know when, uh, you had sent this over. I, I knew something was happening at some point, but uh, when you asked me, I wasn't quite sure of the dates that this was happening. But guys, thank you. Um, you know, I, I just love the fact of, you know, honoring, honoring my grandpa. Uh, I think it is a, um, I, I just think it's very cool to have this kind of a heritage uh, to look back on and to have the fact that people can people can be like, like seeing the fact that grandpa has led the life that he has, has honored the Lord in everything he's done. I, I just, I, I think that it's a very cool heritage to have. And I, I love the fact that we can, we can say that about my grandpa. I think that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, if you guys are, are ready to pray, we'll, we'll pray. Father, thank you. So much for what you're doing thank you thank you for the life um, that grandpa has led thank you for what he has done uh, thank you for god just thank you for the heritage father i thank you that um, god we just are so glad that we can all come here today and we can we can talk about memories um, of things that have that have been passed we can point out things of where you have been leading and guiding and God we are just so grateful for that father we we want to bring you glory today we want to honor you in every part of what we're doing um, and just give you glory father thank you Lord for those that are gathered all over the country uh, I pray right now that you would just uh, be with those that I think that Eric and Hannah are traveling right now I pray that you just give them protection I pray God that in every part of what's going on and and that you'd protect those even that, that are coming here for the Sturgis rally. Uh, God, we, we don't know the things that are ahead of us. Um, many things have come up this year. And we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to just draw close to us. Draw us closer to you, Father. Guide us, we pray. Father, again, thank you. Uh, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the air that we breathe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, let me go back to um, Wayne. You had some thoughts about um, our governance issues. <laughs> Without uh, paper voting or hand voting or uh, nominations, uh, we, we uh, usually, in the tradition of the Roseburg Union, elect someone to lead the next session, the next year as president. And, uh, and without having fried chicken and ice cream to do that with, um, I would just nominate that Eric Howard uh, would remain as our president for the next year. And uh, we could uh, see if uh, that's an idea that everyone agrees with. Yes. Second that. Yes. Any discussion on that? Yeah, well, let's for me. leave it all the same. <laughs> okay. Well, without further ado, then I, I would just... Uh, uh, affirm that we, by common consent, 
that Howard would serve as president next year of the association. Thanks. And that's an idea that Ruth floated um, earlier in the week. And um, so, um, okay, well, hopefully we'll be able to meet face to face next year. Yeah. But we'll see. If not, Zoom works well. Well, yeah, and you can talk about this during the week, but there are some people so far away that you can't come. Um, why don't you try to incorporate, uh, if we have a face-to-face, -face, an hour that we take off and do a Zoom with people who are too far to come? Love that. That's an idea. Yeah. All right. Well, those of you who want to stay around a little bit and chat, uh, you may. Otherwise, um, uh, the meeting is at least formally adjourned. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. I Happy just anniversary, to... John Shelley. Thank you. Thanks. I just wanted to yeah, say I'm that Aunt Lola told me to to give her greetings to people that are there. Okay. Greetings, Very Lola. Good. Hi guys. Wish Thank you were you here. <laughs> or wish we were there or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thanks for everybody for getting the uh, technology together and uh, taking the time to do that. And it is good to see each one of you. Uh, it's next best thing to reaching out and touching someone. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Can we hook our computer, I guess? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now she's the best part. I know that. Oh, you can hug me now. Hey, Harold. <laughs> the egg prices are going down here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Is that is that because of you? Oh, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was down in your neck of the woods not too long ago. Uh, there at Enid, Oklahoma. Okay. At the uh, Air Force Base. It had something to do with my job, so uh -huh. we were down there two and a half days, well, almost three. Uh, a project we're working on at work had to be fitted into one of the aircraft, and mm. we're doing what we call an STC, which is Supplemental Type Certificate. Uh, they want to do some changing, but there's a lot of stuff you have to go through to get it approved. And oh, boy. So it had to do with the training that I took Remember when I bugged you guys a few years ago? Yeah. Going to classes? Well, that gave me the opportunity to go out and do this work. All right. And, uh, do you remember all that class material to finish your job? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it was just uh, paperwork, but you know, yeah. you've got the official title to, that you can do it. So it gives me some travel time. There you go. Who takes care of the chickens when you're gone? Well, uh, Actually, uh, Nathan and April are very involved. We started this business together. If, if Betty's here, uh, he still works a full-time job. April's going to be teaching school here. She teaches at the Christian school. Betty uh, has done a lot of work from home, but she's going back now into uh, three days a week. So we, we keep each other you know, covered. We do it, we run it twice a day. Uh, we'll go over and run it every morning, do the floor eggs. And then when the nest closes at 8.30, well, I do what we call back cleanup, you know, whatever, whatever's left on the belt. Uh, it, it's a pretty neat operation. Automatic feeds. I was going to ask you about the automation. Yeah, mm -hmm. automatic. Where's it located on your property? Yeah, it's it's located uh, north of the house here, uh, just you on the just the just on the other side of you know there's a valley mm -hmm. uh, with trees. It's located right on the other side. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's uh, we've learned a lot. Of, we got the chickens the fifteenth uh, of November, and of course they don't start producing till about. Uh, middle of December, or well, maybe the first part of December. So uh, sent out a little over 4 million eggs so far. So, wow. A lot of omelets. 
<laughs> a lot of cookies. But I mean, it, it is the original question is it, it's a family business, and and uh, so we all we all make it work. And if they're, they're a free range, they're pasture raised. They got fifty acres that they roam can roam. Just listening to all the whole conversation. So. <laughs> That's a lot of eggs to pick up. Well, they they're mostly on a belt. They <laughs> come down the belt, so you got to train them. <laughs> we may pick we may pick up uh, six hundred eggs a day, but I can pick them up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, like little they Little little collars, little shocker shocker collars. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> they they don't listen too well. <laughs> the doors all the doors open automatic and they close automatic at night. Wow. And uh, the hot weather is what's a little harder on them. It cuts mm -hmm. production down, but. Uh, Very good. Wayne, I don't know if anybody mentioned this to you, and I can't remember who mentioned it to me in one of the the chat sessions we had. Somebody suggested maybe we get together more than once a year. Well, just just a thought. <laughs> we can do that. It's uh, it's uh, as long as we have electricity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that is proposal, and um, we could set up something uh, a couple months from now and just invite people in. Maybe we could get some of those that weren't able to be here this time, you know, like Ruth or somebody. Sure. Anybody you know. know of any uh, updates as far as uh, moving kids and, and their new addresses, telephone numbers or whatever like that? Well, send them to me, and so we'll get that updated. Okay. Yeah. Since we usually do that at the reunion, right? Maybe I'll follow up with Harold Howard on that, and um, yeah, and, uh, with when I send out the recording, ask for updates on addresses and phones, and and possibly float an idea of um, maybe a, yeah. a follow up peer meeting in a couple months, and uh, there you go, do that. How do we get uh, how do we get a copy of all those updates, the addresses and phone numbers? Well, we need the updates first, of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> and as soon as we get the updates, well, we'll update the whole list and send it out. Email it. Okay. Email it. Thanks. Probably. If everybody has access to Word on their computers, it's easy. It's about a 15,000 uh, byte file, so it's not very big. Okay. Good to see all of y'all. Good to see you all. Yeah. I'm fine. Bless you, Uncle Elvin. Thanks for your leadership. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, we celebrated yeah. his we celebrated his uh, 97th birthday. Oh. And he said, Well, I've uh, my uh, sister live to be almost 98 he said i don't know i don't think i'll make that and i said yeah i think you will yeah uh, he does he does uh, live at home uh by himself his choice his choice and uh you know i i can call and and talk to him he has the special uh, phone where it it uh, prints out or shows what we say now, there was a problem with that back in March, whenever there wasn't any school, mm -hmm. you know, all the kids were home, well, everybody was on the internet and stuff, his phone wouldn't work. So mm. we actually got him set up, or uh, Karen Dodson got him set up with a, a phone that he could call us, uh, FaceTime or whatever you call it. He could, he could lip read what you're, as long as he can see you and lip read what you're saying, he can understand. And so that was interesting. I think of, I think of when I think of dad, I think of him as uh, 
as uh, the technology, uh, he doesn't let it bother him. He, he moves on with it. And uh, which, which reminds me of something that I told him a while back. He, uh, he had a puzzle. A couple years ago, he had a puzzle that, of a flag that we gave him. And uh, there's a picture on both sides of the flag. And after a while, after a couple, three weeks, he said, I think I'm going to have to give that back to you because I can't figure out how to put it together. <laughs> I told him, I said, Dad, said, I've never seen you give up on anything. <laughs> Next week, he had it together. <laughs> <laughs> so he figured out how to do it. Actually, I think it had a picture on both sides. Yes, he did. He, he did turn it over. It was easier. Yeah, yeah, he did turn it over. So, but he figured out how to do it, and that's you know, that was that's what I always admired about him, and still do. Well, it's been nice talking to all of you. I'm going to take off. So, all right, good, good to see Another you. Time. Bye. 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 Three girls were sleeping in the same bed probably a feather bed or whatever and mother was used to sleeping by herself and of course she could flip and flop and do all this stuff and she kept flopping over on Doris and Doris had finally had enough so she got up and moved to another room or whatever mm. so mother wanted to apologize for disturbing Doris. <laughs> <laughs> mother was in between Doris was the elder and then mother and then Elizabeth um, so I mailed it and, and put a note in, to, in there with it uh, and mailed it to one of the, her son's addresses and said, please keep in touch. You know, we can't call her anymore. We don't, phone numbers changed or whatever, but please keep in touch because mother wants to keep in touch with Doris. Never heard a word back. Well, I kept sending Christmas cards uh, for a few more years and, and still nothing. And once in a while, every time before their Barsbrook reunion, I'd go online to see if I could find out anything about Doris or her sister Elizabeth. And still wasn't finding out any, wasn't finding anything. Well, of course, in July or end of, I guess it was July. Yeah. I know it was the end of June because she had just passed away. I looked up and Elizabeth Skaggs had just passed away. And when I read our obituary, it mentioned that Doris had passed away, which I didn't know that. So then I start researching some more. Doris's uh, had four children. One of the sons had passed away years and years ago. The other two had passed away um, from the time I sent the letter to him to when his mother had passed away. So her three sons had passed away and now all, all that was left was her daughter, and I'm not sure where she is. I, I think she's Tennessee or somewhere. But anyway, Elizabeth passed away, and she was 97 in June. So then I called Howard, and I said, Howard, we need to, to let everybody know that Elvin is the last great, not the great, the last grandchild of Doc and Lizzie. Mm -hmm. So... Elvin, you're the last one. You're the patriarch. <laughs> there were 12 grandchildren. They had four children and 12 grandchildren. Wow. And um, so, interesting. One of the interesting things that I thought about with uh, Aunt Sabra, and this has to go back with perspective. Uh, this was several years ago. Oh, family reunion and Sabre was there and she that been at the park yeah I was down when it was down at the park but so as I'm younger I'm in my 30s my 40s or whatever uh, she said that she would be going and spending time at her daughter's well I didn't really think about it but her daughters were in their late 70s mm -hmm. and you know i'm thinking you're going and saying you know one daughter you know almost have to be 80 here she was uh, you know about 100 and she would go spend time at one daughter or the other and and they were 80s you know so 
kind of a different perspective there realizing and and now and now actually 70 is looking younger 60 <laughs> 60 you know so your perspective on life changes mm -hmm. when you reach some of those mile markers amen brother <laughs> <laughs> I might add just a funny story about Aunt Sabra. Back when we were having the uh, family reunions at the uh, at the park in the big community building, yeah, I remember right. her being there one time. Yeah. Right. And we kids were pulling her around on this big. Uh, yeah. It was kind of like a wagon, only it was big enough for a pallet. Mm -hmm. We were pulling her around on that. Yeah. And she was enjoying it. I think. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't getting scared, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah lots of stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got to send the two guys back over to work on the house next door some more, so. All right. <laughs> see if we can get it ready for a subfloor. Again, it's good to see you all, and uh, yeah. until next time, uh, God bless each one of you. Yes. Very much so. We are blessed. See you Bye, later. Open.